Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to my weekly review. So, just a recap on the last week. Last week was a little bit of a slow week uh, for me, anyway. Um, ended up with a bit of profit at the end of the week. Managed to get a trade on the S and P right at the close, which uh, put me in profit for the week. But it has been a week of uh, pretty volatile price action and not much trending going on. And this is very typical of trend changes. Okay, so um, we've got quite a few charts to get through. You can see running through a number of different charts and uh, we're going to end off with gold and this should give us a pretty good picture of what's going to happen uh, next week so this week has been volatile it has been relatively volatile and uh, what we're expecting to see is uh, we're expecting some levels to hold i think that's pretty much what i'm waiting for at the moment okay so yeah so if you haven't got a cup of coffee yet uh, get yourself one because this is going to be quite a lengthy video we do have the time on the weekend to go through everything in detail and that's pretty much what we're going to do. Right, so let's start off with Euro USD. So the whole week, as you can see in the weekly bar, has been a range. Uh, that's a typical range bar. And you can see we have a high of the range over there, and we have a low of the range over there. But if you look to the left, have a look at what that means. So you can see there's a pretty clear level here, okay, at 114.257. And then we have a, a range to the downside here of 112076 and again you can see where it has been used as resistance and support in the past okay so that in itself doesn't give us much clues the fact that it's a red range bar uh, which is not quite an inside bar I mean, if you count in, not even if you count in the panels but for me the inside bar must be a body so it must look like that there okay um, or even this one here, but this red and green bar here is an inside bar. Uh, that's not so much an inside bar. But anyway, so there's not much, not much price action on the weekly. If we come down to the 8 hour, which is what I want to see, uh, you can see we do have an 8 hour level just a little bit lower. Round about here, uh, uh, 111.421. Okay. Uh, we were making higher highs, because so high lows, there's a low, there's a the next low, and then we've kind of closed just below that on a weekly level. So I think we're either going to continue in this range uh, in utter confusion, or we are going to break one way or another. Now, my bias at the moment is for a stronger dollar. Okay, so in other words, moving to the upside, and I'll show you now why. You can't really see it on Euro USD, but uh, this is range bound. It's not something that I want to be trading next week unless we get a break up or alternatively, we get a breakdown into some decent structure, which is all the way down here and on top of this inverse head and shoulders, which was never tested. So it would be 109914. Okay, so let's just move on to the next chart and you'll see why my bias is for a stronger dollar. Okay, so. A pound GDP US dollar, you can see we had pretty strong move, retracement, and then we've had a, another retracement to the upside here. Okay, now this here is a piercing pattern on the weekly. So again, I'm just going to get some weekly levels in here, and you can see there is my swing low. There is my next weekly swing low. If I look to the left, nothing much in that area right now except for these two swing lows but the minute we start coming down through the time frames you'll see on the eighth hour we've had a very strong trend and then we've gradually pushed it down it hasn't been a major push down you can see all these tails to the upside which indicates the the sellers are in control we came on to a couple of levels we've tagged this eight hour level and you can see the Im impact of this eight hour level right here See how many times it's been touched there, interaction around it, more interaction, more interaction, more interaction. An attempt at a retest and then a successful pin bar into a close. Okay, that level at 124.749 is pretty much got a, f I have a lot of uh, interest at this level, to put it that way. And I'm also looking kind of at that. Okay, so what you can see is typically when you start moving into a decent trend, you'll have a, a lower trend line, then it'll form a, another trend line. Obviously, we need this bar here to continue to the upside. But that is what is looking like, to me anyway, on the 8th hour. 
Agreed, when we look at the weekly, um, that's not the picture that we get. We get a piercing pattern. Let's get rid of that. So we get a piercing bearish pattern. Um, but what we also need to understand is that was the previous weekly high there, with the double top at that level. We closed above it. We should have come back to test it. And that could be seen as a test, coming back to test. And if you look, if I just draw this level a little bit further down, where all these weeks closed and opened at, and we battled to get through it. See that? That's at one, two, four, nine, four, zero. I have a feeling this is just a one bar pullback, um, and we should be getting ready for the next measured move. And the next measured move is pretty much something like that, which takes us slap bang into the top of what was a range at one stage, but um, there's a lot of uh, interaction around here at one thirty three zero zero four. So for me, I'm watching this area with a lot of interest. If we open up an Asian session and we get a green Asian bar, or even just sort of a, another pin bar or something in this area, then I'm really going to be drilling down the lower time frames and looking for my opportunity to the upside. So what I meant by trend changes through the week, if you go to the hour, you'll see we've had a fairly strong trend to the upside. And then we've had this two pushes down on the hour, which uh, pretty much, it, sometimes it it is a trend change. It definitely does feel like a trend change on the hour. And you can see how we're making lower lows here and uh, lower highs. But ultimately, for me, I'm looking for those trend changes on the 8th hour. And I don't see one on the 8th hour just yet. Okay, so that was pretty much... Uh, that's that. That's one. That's two. That was three days worth of downward motion. Okay. So, um, yeah, this pair I'm also looking at um, the dollar. The next one that uh, I always use as a proxy is my own currency, which is a South African rand against the US dollar. Because whenever there is dollar strength in the market, um, this is one of the currencies that tends to to get hammered pretty badly. I mean, you look at all the, the historic charts, you'll see that this and uh, I think the Mexican peso are the two charts, which uh, well, two currencies that just get hammered all the time. So from a technical point of view, you know, we've come back onto this area and I just want to draw them up. You can see we've come all the way back down onto this area, which is 16350. Um, the other thing that we have here on a technical point of view is a 61.8 Fibonacci right over there of this move up. So um, for me, the thing is, hopefully, I think hopefully for the South Africans watching, we're not looking at a scenario like that and taking us all the way back to 21.934. Well, not, not taking us back there. We've never been up there before, but um, that is what look, is looking like to me at the moment anyway. We've had a good move to the upside. We've had a weekly pullback onto structure. And now what you're expecting is another move to the upside. Now, if we come down to the 8 hour, you'll see um, that's a pretty strong bar that we've got. So you can see we had an 8 hour pin bar off this level. Uh, which was a pretty good entry for a long, in my opinion, anyway. And you can see we moved all the way up and we have tagged the underside of this area. So technically from, well, with my trading strategy at the moment, this is an area that I should have been looking for shorts, but uh, not on a Friday afternoon, anyway. But if that happens early in the week, that's a place where I'll be looking for shorts. But right now, I just have... Uh, a very sneaky suspicion looking at the weekly that we have a potential trend reversal here. So this was down and we're now looks like we're breaking back to the upside now, which means dollar strength. Okay. So the other pair that we want to have a look at is a Canadian dollar Swiss franc. Now, this is an interesting pair. If you have just a glance at this, the first thing that we notice is that price is moving down. Okay. We can't really argue that. From this point here to there, you can see there's a continual success of um, lower highs all the way down. Then we had this break, okay, and that break is of 
structure. I'm just going to come to this area where there's more uh, more support. You see there, support, 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 support. And we've come back and we've tested it, and we now have a weekly bar off here. The other thing that we see here is this flag. Okay, so the question that we should be asking ourselves right now is, we're in a weekly downtrend. We formed a flag onto structure and we've bounced off it. Okay, so are we not looking at a new target on the weekly, which is going to be in the region of 064357? Okay, um, and that means stronger Canadian dollar. So if we just come to the 8th hour now and sort of have a look at it, you can see there was our, let's use, let's use this level here. Okay, so there you can see we had a support or resistance down, back up, turned into support, back into resistance. And then we've had a one bar retest of that area. And what we've done is we've created another lower low. So there's a lower low. Oh, sorry, that's not the low, that's the low. Um, and now we've created a lower low. And we've taken out two previous lows here. Okay, uh, we are in a channel, that's for sure. So you can see we bounced off the bottom of the channel here. I'm of the opinion that we are going to be finding some support here and then moving back to the downside. We could still move the top of the channel as well. And then what I've been looking for is a double top of this area. This is a significant area. A lot of uh, resistance here at 071819. So for me, this trend on the 8th hour, which has been up, there is potential that it moves the downside. What's going to negate that is a move above this level of 071818. And this is going to have to be on the 8th hour for me. So I'm going to have to move up, come back and test it, and then start forming higher highs. That would cancel my, my view that we are pretty much in a flag which I'm expecting to break. If this level breaks, this trend line for downside breaks tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, but on Monday morning, um, i wait for the European Open or the US Open just to get a push back to test it. As soon as we start rolling, that's going to be the short area. Okay, so this is looking pretty interesting. And you can see on the 8th hour here how we were forming sort of higher highs and you know, trending to the upside, trending to the upside. Uh, now that we formed this lower low, and I'm just using my fractals as my low points, okay? So um, there was my previous fractal. Here's my current fractal. Now I'm looking for a fractal to the upside, which is going to be a lower high. Okay, so and I would expect it to be somewhere in this area here, 070682. Uh, maybe a bit higher, uh, somewhere around there, but I'm waiting for that fractal to form there. And then that's going to be a, an opportunity for a short US dollar Swiss franc. Now, this is a even more interesting one, okay, and it also bodes well for a strong dollar again. So you can see we've basically been in this triangle for quite some time, okay, and remember we're on the weekly, so we were trading inside this triangle. We've then broken out this triangle. Now, the first question we need to ask ourselves is, was the triangle target hit? Okay, and not quite. Triangle target was down there. But it came pretty close. So if I just adjust this level to these inside tails here, you can see that's pretty much the area that we, we did focus on. Okay, but now if we come down to the 8 hour and we just zoom out a bit here, you can see clear triangle break, clear triangle retest there. That was a decent short to continue with the trend. You had a pretty long uh, run of shorts for the week, came onto level, broke through it, and then immediately the buyer stepped in. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back here and just set a couple of things. So there is a tail, but if I look to the inside, there's a couple of inside tails there. Okay, and then there is another one. I don't know if there was one further on. No. On the lower time frames, again, there was one right the way down here. You can see all these tails here. So that was resistance and then flipped to support here. Just fine tune it there. Now I come here 
and you can see this bottom one wasn't tagged, but this one here was definitely tagged. Okay, and when I go down to the hour and you look at the price action on that, you'll see um, first attempt pretty close to level that is inside bar there or engulfing bar there, waiting for the second attempt. There goes the second attempt there. And a lot of people would have seen that close and taken that short. A lot of retail traders that trade the breakouts. And so they would have taken that right there, one pip like below the tail that would have been in with a stop up there and been hurt. So there's a lot of trades that have worked like that because when you're in a downward trend, that's pretty much how the guy would be trading. So the minute you break through the level, they take the trade, put the stop up there. That's why I prefer to flip it. I wait for the retest and then take it. I've got a much better risk to reward on that. If you look at this on a Bollinger Band here, you'll see that this is a W bottom. Uh, if you look at your oscillators, you'll more than likely see that there'll be diversions here. Why? Because this is a major level. We missed it. You're expecting it, a second move at it. There's a second move. And that's when you want to take your trade. Okay. So always wait for the second move. Okay. So just coming back to 8-hour quickly, uh, you'll see now we have moved up into an area where I would expect sellers to come in. And there were sellers at the close here. So Monday morning, I am watching this area pretty clearly. If we do get another pin bar or a red bar off this, then it's a case of drilling down to lower time frames and looking for the short entry. And the same strategy applies. You wait for the pullback onto structure before taking the trade. And I have a feeling this is um, pretty much going to move to the downside. So that's another pair that is a dollar strength. Okay, um, oh, I lied, sorry. That is a pair of Swiss franc strength. Okay, so um, a little bit of confusion in the markets at the moment. Anyway, so when we look at, uh, what are we looking at? US dollar, Canadian dollar. You can see we had this breakout of structure pretty violently on the weekly, came back, um, broke to the blow, we, which was to be understood because we did have some more structure further down and we also had this gap, okay? So we got down there and then immediately reversed and we've closed above this level here. Um, just fine tune it a bit there, okay? So this level here, you can see all the tails on that level, um, that level which is 135361, okay? And then to the downside, 133568. Okay, so if we come down to the 8th hour on this pair again, you'll see a couple of things. So firstly, we had this double bottom here. Now, you can see this is classic trend reversal. So you can see the trend was down, and uh, every opportunity you get, you should have been selling. Even at this point when it broke, I just moved that level there. When we broke through here, you can see there was your signal to sell, sell, um, but the problem was you had this major level here, which just went back to test that major level. Okay, so what are we looking at now? So we've got this pullback onto the structure here at 135371. So what I'm looking for here is a move to the upside. So these two last uh, two eight hour bars here, I mean, it's the last day of the week, Friday. Um, there is a bit of profit taking from this long because, you know, we were in a downtrend. It's only looking like a reversal now, but this thing could still continue to the downside. But at the moment, provided that this area holds, and sorry, I'll just put in another level in here because there's two that you need to watch. So this swing high is the one, and then this one. So it's just started the swing high. That's 134926. And then we have 135371. So we're looking for a pullback onto that area uh, before moving to the upside again. So I'm looking for a pair of longs on this pair as well. So uh, guys, if you're still listening, thanks so much. Like this, appreciate the support, but uh, just smash that. Uh, like button for me, uh, drop us a comment, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying to grow the channel and um, it's pretty exciting to see how um, how the channel has grown from nothing to where we are today. Anyway, um, moving on, pound Japanese yen. So this one is complete confusion. Okay, so the reason why I've got it on here is just to highlight something. So we've had this massive, I'm just gonna call it an exhaustion bar, massive exhaustion bar up to a level what level was that, uh, which we fell short of, which is pretty much the structure here. You can see uh, resistance, resistance, support, 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 breakthrough, and then we try to come back at it. 
if I just fine tune it to these tails here, you'll see we tagged it. Okay, so point is at the moment we were trending to the downside and there is a trend line here as well. Okay, so we were trending to the downside, came back up and the sellers stepped in. Now, I would have expected a bounce off this area here, which was 135.729, didn't quite get it. And we're now moving back to the downside. So I think what we are forming at the moment is a triangle. Okay, so I would expect a bit of a move down to the downside and then probably move back up to the upside. If we now come look at this on the eight hour, you'll see something fairly significant. So on the weekly, it looks really confusing. On the eight hour, uh, we take it from there to there. We have a 61.8. If I take it just to that level there, because you had a big move up, you had a fairly decent retracement, and this hasn't been a retracement here. It's just been sort of sideways range there. That takes a slap bang on the 61.8. See how we're bouncing on the 61.8? Okay, that's the first thing I want you to bear in mind. We are at the 61.8. The second thing I want you to bear in mind is if I take this level here and I adjust it right into the middle of this congestion here, you can see it was used as support there, used as resistance here, used as support and resistance and confused in that area. But that is looking like second move should be looked for. And we're going to take it from there because that is the Fibonacci. And that gives us a trend line break to the upside. Okay. So that gives me a potential target of 143.188. So I am watching this area with interest. Uh, there's one thing that is going to impact this, and that I've been speaking about it most of the week, is this head and shoulders here. Okay, so there's a shoulder, there's a head, there's a shoulder. So it could just come back here and then move to the downside for the head and shoulders. Let's just use a block for this because this is getting messy now. So, head and shoulders target takes us all the way down to more support. You can see support, 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 resistance, resistance, support, resistance, support, breakout. Okay, so that does bring us down to this area here. Okay, so what um, what would make the trade for me? Uh, pretty much come down to the hour. And this is where it starts really getting interesting because this to me is really clear. This is a double bottom. Okay, the fact that it happened on a Friday afternoon, well, Friday evening late, just before the close, is a little bit of a worry. I tend to kind of ignore it. So I just move to the next structure, and the next structure is this area right up here. We get a break of 136070, a break and a retest that area. I'm long, and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can see this pattern. This is not rocket science, this one, double bottom, first target up there. Okay, um, but with my first target, that's definitely area to be taking profit, and then you're waiting for the pullback, and then you're going to be trending this thing up with a trend change, pretty much for the measured move on the 8 hour, all the way back up to this area here in 143.188. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm looking for. If we do break below this area here of 133940, then it's a case of re-looking at it, and um, I'll I'll highlight that if it does happen uh, during the weekly or during the daily reviews. But I think for me right now, this is definitely setting up for a move to the upside. Euro Aussie dollar. If we look at the week, we've had pretty much trending all the way down. We've ended up with an inside bar um, in an area of congestion. Okay. Uh, massive area of congestion there. You can see how long do we spend here? It was pretty much almost a whole year that we just spent ranging in this area here. Um, before breaking out of it and then coming back. So, you know, are we going to go back into that range? I think that's the first question you need to ask yourselves. And uh, the second question you need to ask yourself is, is this still in a downtrend or has this flipped? Okay, now, if I just adjust that there, let's ignore what's happened in the past. Let's just focus here. Okay, I've been speaking about this little 
potential inverse head and shoulders here. It's just this pin bar here that throws it out because that's not technically a, a head and shoulders, more of a cup and handle here. But we've broken, we've come back to test it. Uh, if I break down to the hour on this chart, um, you'll see there's still a little way to go to come and test because I've got two areas to test here. So there's the first one, which is my neck, uh, which is the neckline of a cup and handle, and that's the other neckline of the cup and handle as well. So we've got this area, we can see these tails here forming around here. So again, this is another one which I am looking for a move to the upside. So as soon as we start making higher highs on probably even the one hour, uh, one hour or four hour, that's going to be an opportunity for a move to the upside. Okay, so that's very much um, something on my radar. A Euro uh, Swiss franc. Okay, so we had this massive move up, big move up. Big move down, big confusion. Okay, this two, these two week bars is complete confusion. Um, it wasn't even on, you know, we didn't even find structure for the bounces. If I look at my fractals, and if I look at the downside, nothing really of interest anyway. Okay, break this down to the eight hour. We found structure there, and we bounced off it. Okay, we have also broken a trend line. That trend line was a pretty well-defined um, channel, channel, flight wedge, doesn't matter how you look at it, it's just a consolidation channel, and into structure, okay, and we've bounced off there. So what I'm looking for is a higher low, okay, because of the confusion on the weekly, because it was such a big move up, such a big move down, I'm now looking for some structure on the eight hour, and I want to see a higher low. So in other words, there's a low, there's a higher low. I want to see that kind of pattern forming, and then I'll be looking for moves to the upside. Um, this could be a breakout and then a retest to the down here, downside again, or even further down. Um, I mean, nobody really knows, but uh, it does look. If you look at the at the one hour, you can see inverse head and shoulders. Yeah, there's a shoulder, head, shoulders, um, and you can see how we are forming higher lows. Okay, so technically. For me, on the hour right now, I'll be watching this area where we're at now, Monday. Bounce up, I want to see it come back and test it. Hold it, start forming higher lows, and it's long. Okay, so that's the, the currency pairs for now. Uh, let's quickly just have a look at uh, the markets because that's uh, even more interesting. So just starting off with Europe with the DAX. So we've had the massive move down with the coronavirus, and then we've had this uh, miraculous recovery straight into a level. There's my weekly level right there, and um, I'm just going to put it in the middle there because we've got this area here and that area, and you can see it's pretty much where we got to. And then we've had a reversal. This reversal is a massive inside bar. Now, this does not look very exciting, but one thing you must understand about the stock market. Stock markets are not designed to go down. They're designed to go up. Okay, so corrections, any pullbacks is pretty much seen as a correction. You should be looking for opportunities to buy. So why do I say they're not designed to go down? Well, the instrument that uh, they trade in, which is stocks, is uh, designed to for company growth, for capitalist growth. So you know, our pensions, um, our investments are all sitting on stocks, and uh, obviously we're not going to we're not going to buy into those um, stocks if uh, we are not actually making money out of them. Okay, so. The, the nature of the beast when it comes to stocks is they are going up. So any pullback, you must always look at a pullback uh, or any red bar as a just a correction and you're looking for opportunities to get in. Okay, so obviously you can trade it both ways and then you're going to do that on the lower time frames. But if we start now drilling down, I suppose we can't do an 8 hour on the DAX, we'll have to go to a 4 hour because it's not a 24 hour market. You have a look at the 4 hour here, we had this pullback, a pretty big fall. But look what's been happening over the last couple of four-hour bars. So we are pulled back onto support, and it does look like we're looking for a, another move up. The trend was up, okay? Uh, we haven't confirmed a re trend reversal yet. For me, trend reversal, uh, so we've got a lower low here, and we've got a sort of a lower high, okay? So I suppose we could argue that that is confirmation. But um, in my books, 
I want to see a retest of a breakout level, which is all the way up here. Okay, so at the moment there is an island reversal here as well. See, there's a gap. There's a gap. Uh, the island, that, that pattern has played out, so the target has been reached. But, um, you know, the question is, what now? So these tails here, a uh, common name for that is barbed wire. You can see all the tails. That is indecision. Okay, so for the DAX at the moment, I am pretty skeptical about diving in long with what I see at the moment, and I'm also pretty skeptical diving in short with what I see at the moment. So whenever I have a look of confusion on my face when it comes to the stock markets, I tend to stay away from it. And that actually goes for any currency pair. If there's no clear strategy or no clear opportunity, rather stay out of it. And um, what I don't appreciate about the stock markets at the moment is that they, the volatility has no um, rational structure and uh, it can continue for years and months until it actually gets some rational structure again. So while it does that, I tend to stay away. But I, at face value, you know, looking at the hour at the moment, we do have opportunity for a move to the upside. If we look at the daily, um, look at that range bar, slap bang, inside bar, okay, in an uptrend. So what does that tell you? It tells you we're still moving to the upside. Okay. If we do break below this area here of 11786, um, I'd want to see kind of a retest of it, and then we have a move to the downside. So there's a lot of uh, narrative and noise around uh, this was just the blip, and we're getting, we're going to now fall. And the measured move is coming, and you know, people are talking about this kind of stuck stuff here. Yeah, but yeah, there, there are so many things that are different from the last two crashes or the three crashes that we've had in the markets. Um, you know, the banks just print more money and just throw money at the problem and uh, hope it goes away. And it, it's worked so far. I mean, this is what they've done here. They've just thrown money at the problem and got it almost to recover to an all time high. So why do we think that uh, they're not going to have any other options left? So anyway, uh, I'm a little bit skeptical about this market and uh, probably going to be staying out of it for the, the week. I didn't even trade it this last week. But um, let's just move on to Wall Street. Wall Street, similar scenario. So you can see we've hit some resistance here. Uh, not there, right over there. And we hit it pretty square on, uh, 27,500. And then immediately the seller stepped in. Now there are a few different patterns in play here. Uh, one of them, which I think a lot of analysts are pointing out at the moment, is this other way. Uh, well, there's a channel, okay, and then we have a wedge, and um, the wedge is sort of hovering at the bottom. But again, look at the eight hour bars. Tails the upside, tails the downside confusion. But what it does tell you, if we zoom in here, and pretty sure you can see that, look at these tails. So for eight hours, buyers were stepping in at the end of a week. Why? Why are buyers stepping in here? These tails indicate that we have buyers, okay? And they're coming in around here. Now if I zoom out, there's not even really much structure here. You would expect these buyers coming in further down here, somewhere around here at uh, 24674. So the only reason why they're doing that is they are defending this trend line. Okay, so you can clearly see that. So are we going to continue to the downside? I'm not entirely convinced. It is possible. Um, are we going to move to the upside? I'm not entirely convinced either. Um, it could be possible. So the the fundamentals indicate to move to the downside, but the technicals right now, for me anyway, it's um, this is a solid move down. This should be a consolidation range, but with all these tails and barbed wire, this is confusion, and it's confusion at the end of a week, which just makes it, which just adds more mystery to it. Okay, so for me, I'm going to need to see structure. So the structure is going to be move up, come back, create a high low for me, and then long. Um, alternatively, move down, come back and test a break, and start forming uh, lower highs, and then I'm short. Okay, 
Because right now, this is, uh, let's just call it a pivot, pivotal point at the moment. So this area here, for some reason, 25153. Uh, let's pick, see if we can pick something up on the monthly here. Um, just delete the noise. And that monthly bar doesn't look very interesting at all, does it? And you can see there's not there's nothing much really. There's no we monthly fractals or anything. So yeah. It does look like when you look at it on the monthly and the weekly, it does look like you're looking for the second move down and you know there is merit for that thought. And when you look at it on a bit of an eight hour environment, it's testing a trend line, we're in an upward trend, um, you're looking for longs again. So there's merit for both sides, and uh, that's probably what um, just adds fuel to the fire. Okay, S&P, pretty much the same thing, except we broke through this level. The difference on the S&P is we broke through this level. Here I've been talking about it for quite some time, 30.22, uh, and we've tested it and we've closed above it. Okay, and I think we've also defended the, if I'm correct, we closed above 3,000, yeah. Oh, we'll get the close now. Um, so there was our resistance, 3213, three, and you can see we hit it, bounced off it. Uh, problem is that that's an engulfing red bar on the weekly. If we come down to the eight hour, exact same picture, okay? And I can draw this trend line in. I really need to because you can see it pretty clear, clear as mud. That is def trying to defend the trend line here. So for me, there's still another move up at the moment, just looking at it at face value. Um, if we do break through this uh, chaos, this barbed wire chaos, then that's going to be the case. Now, when I see this kind of stuff, I typically stay out of the market. I'm really not interested in this because um, it is confusion. There are sellers and there are buyers in the same area, and they're going to keep driving the price all over the place until one of them wins. And I'd prefer to ride with the one that wins rather than try I compete with them because um, I just don't have the, the patience for that, I would say. Okay, so again, it's another market that is relatively confused, um, and there's a lot of noise. Bear that in mind, there's a lot of noise. You know, there's noise that the recovery is underway and everything's fine, and um, then you've got the noise that, oh dear, there's a second wave of infection coming. Uh, maybe we don't have this under control, and then we fall 5%. And the very next day, we sort of uh, start ranging in a 2% uh, range. I mean, that is extreme volatility for these instruments, okay? And uh, you can go back over the years and you'll see what I mean by extreme volatility. And then, uh, if we just wait for the monthly data to come, look at how controlled all these bars have been. There was a bit of volatility, then there, there was a little bit of volatility, some more volatility. And then this year, look at the volatility. I mean, that is just massive. Okay, so this is more in tune with what markets want to be. Okay, this chaos that we find ourselves in today is not what markets really want, especially not stock markets anyway. Okay, so yeah, so that's just a complete level of confusion as you, as you hear. But uh, I think the point at the moment is, where did we close? Closed in this area here. So, yeah, so we closed above 3,000, uh, 3,035. But, um, yeah, the proof is going to be in the pudding to see what happens next. I think uh, even if you look at it hour short, then whole of yesterday we rallied and then they try to drive it down again, try to drive it down again, and then the, the probably profit taking that happened here, take out, take the profit and, and wait for Monday. So very interesting environment we find ourselves at the moment. So any breakdown below these pin bars and retest of them will get me short. Uh, any move to the upside and pull back with a high low is going to get me long. I think that's pretty much the long and short of that one. And finally, let's just get on to gold. So and if you're still watching, well done. Uh, this is kind of what I try to do every week. I just understand exactly what's going to happen next week, so I'm prepared for what's going to happen. Now, when we look at gold weekly, we are clearly ranging okay there's no reason to think any other way we are ranging uh, we are ranging in this area here we are pretty much not getting our all-time highs and you can see how we are struggling with 1794 
Now, normally what happens from price hacking perspective, this is range, it's trending to the upside, but this is just consolidation for me. I'm expecting another break to the upside. And the first target is going to be 17.94, and the next target will be 19.14, and possibly 2,000 as a new high. But um, it is going to take some time because we are impacted by what chaos is happening in the markets at the moment. And you can see here on the 8 hour, the range is very clear. Okay, so now this is just something that you, just, I use it as a proxy every now and then if there's a trade opportunity, uh, there's always longs off the bottom here, because I am looking for longs, we're in an upward trend, and uh, waiting for some breakouts, because uh, when we do get breakouts on gold, they typically, I'm trying to just get some examples here. Okay, so here's a range, and you can see breakout, and you can see how volatile the breakouts are. Okay, so gold is pretty much some, it's something that always works that way. Uh, you can see here's more. A move, there's structure, breakouts, and up we go. So yeah, so I think uh, gold is definitely, doesn't add any clues to what's going to happen in the markets uh, next week. But um, what will be very clear is if we do get a break up to the upside, then people are going to be buying gold at the safe haven. The same with um, the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. Okay, and the dollar. Okay, so the, what we've seen the last couple of weeks or last couple of months is that the dollar has also been seen as a safe haven. So um, that's what you're going to see. So if you see you know, the dollar getting stronger and you see gold getting stronger and you see the stock markets falling, that's pretty much what happened in March. Um, but the converse could also be true. I mean, there's no real guarantee of what's going to happen and what people are thinking. Or should I say what algorithms are thinking because most of this trading is done by computers and not by people. Anyway guys, that's enough rambling for me for this week. Hope uh, it helped you somewhat to prepare for uh, Monday morning. And um, yeah, I think Monday morning is a case of look at your charts again, look at the lines you've drawn and uh, follow the same plan. If you keep following the plan and you keep looking for structure to buy off or, or sell off, and uh, you'll find that your trading will become a hell of a lot more profitable. Anyway, that's all for me this week. Hope it helps, and we will catch you later. Cheers for now.